Statical determinacy is an important concept in structural mechanics. A structure is said to be statically determinate if the equations of statics, i.e. force equilibrium, moment equilibrium, alone, can be used to calculate the internal forces in a structure. More important than whether the, we can simply use statics to determine internal forces is whether a structure has actually been designed to achieve stability in the first place. For, strust, for truss structures, we can apply a simple formula to determine if a truss design will be stable using just knowledge of the number of members, M, and the number of joints, J, we can write the formula or criteria to ensure internal stability. So this criteria is this one here, M plus 3 must be greater than or equal to two times the number of joints. And we're going to show this in an example very shortly. This formula is derived from the fact that we have at least two, mo we have at most, two equations of equilibrium at each joint J. A maximum number of three support reactions for a statically determinate structure in 2D. One for each equilibrium equation we can apply to the structure as a whole. And M is the unknown member forces. If a structure is statically indeterminate, extra information about the structure, i.e. material properties and deflections, is required to determine the internal forces. The analysis of indeterminate structures is beyond the scope of this statics module, but is covered in later modules of the course program. Okay, the degree of indeterminacy now, and we're, we're going to use this D as the degree of indeterminacy, allows us to know how many extra or too few members a given trust might have. And we can calculate the degree of indeterminacy by rearranging the stability criterion above, and so the D now becomes how many extra members we might need to add in. And we're going to show this via a way of an example. So, we have a truss here. We, we've not given any support conditions on this truss. So we have four bar members, all connected by smooth, frictionless joints. And we want to know whether this is stable and statically determinate. So we can see, you, or you can imagine in your head from this, that just by applying small forces, that you could get the trust to deform quite easily. So we know from intuition that this is not going to be stable. Okay, but we're gonna formally apply the procedure and work out what our degree of statical indeterminacy is. So writing down the formula just to remind ourselves. So we have so we have the formula M plus three must be greater than and equal to two times J the number of joints. So for this Trust that we're looking at, we can see that we have one, two, three, four bars. So four plus three must be greater than or equal to two J. And in this case, we have one, two, three, four joints. So two times four, so seven must be greater than or equal to eight. And we can see that the criteria isn't satisfied. Now we can go on and work out what the degree of indeterminacy is. So again, the formula was D equals M plus three minus two J, two J. And so we can see that D equals four plus three minus two times four. So seven minus eight equals minus one. So we could see that we could add another member into the structure to make it statically indeterminate. We'll come on to that in a second. But we're gonna consider another structure now, very similar. So we have four joints, but now we have one, two, three, four, five, six bars in the structure. At the center, be careful, those bars are overlapping but they're not joined by one of the joints. 
So, having a look at our formula again, so m plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 2j. So, the number of members now we had was 6 plus 3 must be greater than 2 times j, and the number of joints hasn't changed, it's still 4, so 2 times 4, so 9, greater than or equal to 8. So we know that this truss is stable. We know if we try to push on one of the members, say we're holding this member down, pin joint, that there's no way that we can get this truss to deflect and to deform. Okay, so now we'll look on at the, whether the truss is determinate or indeterminate by rearranging the formula. We can see straight away from here that actually that the degree of indeterminacy is going to be 1. But let's go through using the formula D equals M plus 3 minus 2J. So D equals 6 plus 3. 3 minus 2 times 4, which equals 1, which means we have one extra bar in the system, so we cannot use the equations of statics to be able to solve the system, and this truss is what we call statically indeterminate, innate. Okay, so we'll go on to another example, almost the same truss as above, but now we just have the one cross member on the system, so let's count up first of all, number of joints is still one, two, three, four, and the number of members is one, two, three, four, five. So again, applying our formula. Plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 2j for stability. So number of members now is 5. Plus 3 greater than or equal to 2 times 4. So we've got 8 must be greater than or equal to 8. So yes, the stability criteria is satisfied. The structure is stable. Now we go on to look at the degree of indeterminacy. And we use the formula D equals M plus 3 minus 2J. And so D equals 5 plus 3 minus 2 times 4. And that's equal to 0. So the degree of indeterminacy in this case is 0. And we can use the equations of statics to solve this problem. So we call this statically determinate and we can solve this problem using the equations of statics and finally one other quick example is we've got a very similar structure we've got two uh, cross members but now if we add in a joint and we'll cut these members into the middle members into separate sections. So we have one, two, three, four joints. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight members. Sorry, I forgot there. We now have five joints. So J equals 5 and M equals 8. And we apply those formulas again. So check for stability. So we have for stability M plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 2 times the number of joints. So we get 8 plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 2 times 5. So 11 is greater than or equal to 10. So the stability criteria is satisfied. And we can go on then to also check 
the determinacy of the structure as well. But we're not going to do that. We're showing simply that this is a structure that we can solve that is stable. Okay, another important concept we go on to is well, whether a structure is internally stable is whether it's externally stable. And now we're going to start looking at whether we have sufficient supports for a structure to be stable. Okay, and we're going to change the formula we had before to, instead of including m plus 3, now we're including a criteria where that 3 now changes to r, which is the number of support reactions. And this can determine when we add support reactions in, whether a structure that might be statically indeterminate in terms of internal forces or unstable internally, might still be able to be in equilibrium. So again, we're going to take a simple case and have a look at how we go with this. So we'll have a look at the stability criterion. We've just done this for this structure, but we'll, we'll repeat it. So we had M plus 3 is greater than or equal to 2J. So the number of members was 4 plus 3 must be greater than or equal to 2 times the number of joints, which, which was 8, so 2 times 4. So the internal stability criteria is not satisfied. And we can see we could easily get this truss to be able to deform and instead of being a square, turn into a trapezoid. Okay. So we know that it's not stable and we're going to now have a look using the external stability criteria which was now M plus R is greater than 2 times 4, the number of joints. Now we need to count up the number of support reactions and so we'll go through this relatively slowly. At the right hand support here we have no X reaction, but we do have a Y reaction. So that's one reaction there. At this, this left-hand support at the bottom, we have a Y reaction as well. And we have an X reaction. So in counting up the number of supports, we count the individual reactions we could have. So that's one, two, three. So the R in the formula is free. So it turns out the calculation for this case still have four members plus three reaction forces must be greater than or equal to eight. So still the structure is not externally stable. Okay, so what we can do, again looking at the degree of indeterminacy, we can see that we can have D equals minus one. So we need to add either a member or a support to this structure to make it determinate or externally stable. So we'll draw the structure again. And we add the existing support conditions. So two supports or two reactions at this bottom left hand corner. And we have a roller support giving us just the one Y reaction at the right hand corner. Let's make these pin jointed. And now instead of adding a member inside the truss, we're going to add to this structure a roller support at this top left hand side. So now, in terms of the number of support reactions we have, we have the two Y reactions at the bottom that we had before, the X reaction we had before, and now we're adding to it an X reaction at this top left hand corner. So now we have one, two, three, four reaction forces, and we put this into our external stability criteria. So M plus R greater than or equal to two times the number of joints and put the numbers in there so the number of members is four plus the number of reactions now is 
4 must be greater than or equal to 2 times j. The number of joints was 4, so 8 equals greater than or equal to 8. So the external stability criteria is now satisfied. So as you can see, if we try to apply a force here, we cannot get this to deform into the trapezoidal shape that we had before without the reaction force there. So this is said to be externally stable.